Thank you very much. Um, did you did anybody see this thing in the uh, in the third of October, twenty sixteen, where the Thunder Times seemed to think that I was the manager of Arsenal Football Club? <laughs> They were writing out my biography, and somehow it got confused with the one. They were simply going back to 205. They did do something about Arsenal, Arsenal Zanga, and then there we are. So they think I'm part of um, the manager of Arsenal. Now, if you support that club, God bless you. If you don't, well, who cares? <laughs> we can all be mistaken for all kinds of different things. And of course, I could see where they got their confusion. It was Bishop uh, for Stepney when um, they wanted to change their rather small uh, you know, grounds, Highbury, into the biggest thing they've got now called Emirates. Um, and I was on the chairing this, the partnerships and therefore the negotiation with the council for them to get a greater grant, provided they were able to provide some social housing. So that's how my involvement with the club is. Now, I have never supported it, but my son is an avid supporter. Well, friends, the Church of England has been engaged in sport and mission for decades at the parish level. Uh, it's also engaged through diocesan positions, such as club chaplains in professional sports, and particularly football, and more recently, the commissioning of our bishop for sports, ambassador, Bishop Tony. Uh, why we've taken that long to do it, I will never know. Now, hands up for those who followed Rio 20, 2016 Olympic Games. But I'm, I'm not saying really followed. I'm not talking about you going in and out. Actually staying up late at night. <laughs> How many? I'm glad I'm in company with some people. Thank you very much. Well, whatever sport you follow, friend, whether it's from gymnastics to cycling, rugby to tennis, it was fantastic to be part of Team GB recognizing the hard work, commitment, and talents actually they displayed. As a Yorkshire person, Sada Golden Guard from Sheffield, Jessica Ennis Hill has now retired. Uh, but sport and mission is nothing, friends, new. It's not new. Uh, the catalyst of the 2016 London Olympics and work that was undertaken actually helped to challenge the ongoing thinking and behavior of the Church of England towards future sports mission. There were many reasons and motivation for this. They include this. Sport mission works actually. It does work, so let us grow it. Share best practice and learn lessons together across dioceses. Secondly, sport has a great impact on many young people in our congregations across the age range and need to think about a, actually a stronger narrative for this area of life because it is where many spend their social time and actually build friendships. Sport on Sunday is growing and often creates tensions as increasingly sport actually meets at the same time as church and families actually have to work out a health care of balance. Um, when our children were small, sports on Sunday was not as strong as it is now. But now actually it's a very big Sunday activity. So if you are a Christian family and you've got children, and they want to go and play, it's not going to be an easy. So you've got to work that out. But I suspect um, messy church and things like that, um, fresh expressions, you could do it on different days. And churches have got to be aware that they can't now expect most of all young people to be in church on a Sunday morning. They'll be somewhere else. Uh, this gets more difficult the higher the level of sport actually people are involved in. It gets more, more and more difficult. Fourthly, research suggests that churches that don't have a thriving youth work won't thrive in the long run. A guy has been researching on fresh expressions and actually says the ages really between 10 to 25, if you haven't got a fresh expression of church, you're not going to find them. So friends, if you don't have a church with a thriving youth work, in the long term, you're not going to flourish. Many young people particularly are involved, again, as I said, in sports on Sundays. And the other thing is this, sports continue to dominate popular culture. Uh, the front pages alongside the back pages. That's how I found out they thought I was the manager of Arsenal Football Club. So the question is, how do we really engage? 
how will you really engage when you know that sport is actually dominating the culture? Pop music used to at one point, um, but now actually sport really takes in a huge number of people. And most families uh, go actually to those games as well. 10 million people play sport. You want to know? This is quite a huge, staggering figure. 10 million people play sport in 150,000 sport clubs each week. 150,000 clubs. Where is the church? Okay. This is a significant, actually, mission field. Now, we want to uh, evangelize not because we want to prop up a dying church. That's not the reason. We want to do it because the good news of Jesus is for everybody and that young people should get to know it as well. As Christians involved in the world of sport, we are called to be a witness to those around us, fostering good relations and building links across com you know, com communities beyond the church so that the reality of Jesus Christ is visible for all. I cannot imagine our Lord, if he was alive today, you won't see him in the crowds at a football match or a rugby match or that rather more specialized game called hockey. He's got his stick with him. So watch out. Well, in his letters, uh, the Apostle Paul often uses the, dis um, the discipline and dedication needed to excel in sport to help us picture what being a disciple looks like. Now, these letters are quite old. So sports is not a new thing. He actually uses the image of sport. As churches, we should actually celebrate all that sport has to offer and its importance in local communities as well as worshipping the God who has made our enjoyment of sports possible. Um, I mean, there are some people who think that, uh, actually, you can get clergy sometimes complaining to the congregation, not having young people because they are at a football match on a Sunday morning. Well, why are you complaining to those who are there? I mean, the people are absent. So what should we do? What should we really do? Do you think that Sport is a good thing, and I happen to think it is. The church needs an openness to the world. We need to be open. Through lack of openness to the contemporary world, theology has actually sometimes worked in a kind of vacuum with neither meaningfulness for itself nor the power of self-communication. Openness to the world must always, of course, be accompanied by an openness to Christ crucified, or else the world's wisdom actually may mislead. So... I mean, I love expressions by David Shepard, who was one of our greatest cricketers. He said, whenever he played cricket, either as a batsman or as a bowler, when he faced a very fast bowler and is near the stumps, he would say, Holy Spirit, that is for you. And he would whack it. <laughs> the same in the bowling, that was given speed. Because he never separated his sports from his faith. They were not in two compartments. The shepherd was the person who loved Jesus. And on that particular cricket pitch, he wanted always Jesus Christ to come out. So this engagement with the world is a very important thing. And Christ must never, never be left out, Christ crucified. The need is for every kind of openness to the past, to the present, to the world, to heaven and to eternity. That's our openness, actually, to heaven is null and void unless it carries with it an openness to the world around us. We've got to see Jesus. With the daily decisions and relationships of the world around us, we encounter God, and we learn the meaning of our theology in human terms. So those who isolate the secular city from the past and from the eternity lose the dimension, actually, in which human lives have their ultimate meaning and the perspective in which the need of the secular city are rightly seen. Yes, there is a holy city, but even the secular city, Christ wants to be Lord over it. Nowhere more vividly than actually for us in the service of the communion, where Christians find Christ, uh, an openness, the past and the present, to God, his kingdom, and to the world. Now, for people who believe that God became human in Jesus, and in that bread and wine, which are still very, very earthly things, friends, to see sport as a possibility and the vehicle for the spirit of Christ to be present is not all that difficult to see. 
So through this openness, the Christian is equipped to face the task of the present with realism and to face the future with hope. Now, this is a man often who has been misunderstood, uh, Bishop David Jenkins of Durham. Let me give you some of his amazing quotes, and they're all his, uh, three of them. He said, God is as he is in Jesus, therefore we have hope. God is as he is in Jesus, therefore we have hope. Then listen to this one. When you feel you are not up to it, God is already down to it. Now, that's fantastic. And that's the message you want to say to all our sports people. You may not feel up to it, but actually God is already down to the thing. And then thirdly said, for God's sake, don't be religious. For humanity's sake, be holy and Christ-like. In sports, we do not want to look like boring guys and lasses that really make it look as if our religion is something awful. It is possible we can bring that joy of the Spirit. So please, for heaven's sake, for God's sake, don't be religious. And for humanity's sake, be holy and Christ-like.